bulletin, there is a visitor's card, and we would ask you to fill that out. We'd just like to know a little bit more about each one of you and um, to be able to get to know you a little bit better. And then on the back side of that visitor's card is a communication card, and, and, and that's how we keep up with our prayer requests and, and different things like that. If you'd like a visit from the preacher, uh, there's a place there about uh, to, to mention that or any kind of special message. So take a moment if you have any special needs and, and fill that out. Um, also, uh, we have coming up this week a missionary committee meeting on Thursday. That's going to be at 10 o'clock, but it's not just for the missionary committee members. We'd like to invite any of you who would like to be there to come for that because we're going to have a representative from Lifeline Christian uh, mis Missions there to explain their program to us. Lifeline Christian Missions is uh, located over around Columbus and uh, they uh, do special missionary projects all over the world. And some of you may remember a few years ago that we did the peanut butter program here, peanut butter drive for Haiti. We had kids bring in jars of peanut butter and you taped a, a quarter to the top of it to pay for the shipping. And they do those kinds of things and, and other things as well, but it's an active missionary program and, and we'd like to get uh, our church members involved in that. So we encourage you to be here if you're able uh, for that. Our uh, leadership committee meeting, or leadership meeting, is going to be next, uh, is that Wednesday or Thursday? Mon oh, Monday, okay, a week from Monday, August 22nd at 7 o'clock here at the church. You're invited to be here for that. Uh, the, uh, we want to remind you that there'll be no Bible study this Wednesday night because we're getting ready for a fall kickoff which is going to be coming on September 7th, and we're going to be opening that up with a soup and sandwich supper starting at 6 o'clock, and then there'll be Bible studies for both the youth um, and adults at 7 o'clock. And uh, Brent might mention a little bit more to you how that's going to work uh, later on. Um, Jake is planning a trip on September 16th uh, to the Living Word Outdoor Drama in Cambridge. If you've not been there, it's an outdoor drama uh, uh, portraying the life of Christ. And it's a, it's a great program. Uh, I'm not sure who's uh, portraying Jesus that weekend, but we do have a local man, George Clark, who many of you know who does that quite often, so he may be doing that that night. And that's not just for the kids. We want to invite the adults to go along with that. But there will be more details coming on that. Uh, I mentioned that we have the fall kickoff coming. Um, there's a fall festival in the plans. We have trunk or treat coming up, and the ladies group is going to be coming up again. Uh, there'll be more information forthcoming on that. So lots of activities coming up in the next few weeks. And I was telling somebody when I came in this morning, I love fall, and I got a taste of it this morning because I had my first cup pumpkin spice coffee. Now that's a great that's a great start to a Sunday morning, isn't it? But uh, anyway, uh, so just keep all of those things in mind, and uh, we hope to uh, see all of you here for all of those activities. Let's stand together for our call to worship. And this morning I'll be sharing with you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 28 uh, through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives his strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Rick Bailey, would you lead us in our invocation? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for those that have come out this morning to worship you. We ask that you would help each one of us to truly uh, put our hearts and minds in worshiping you and uh, make it a personal experience. We ask that you would, uh, as we go through our service, be with uh, those that are singing, leading our song service. We ask that uh, be with those uh, that are around the communion table this morning and be with Brent as he gives her message. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. And we'll join together as we worship this morning. We're going to be singing Victory in Jesus, verses 1, 2, and 3. With enthusiasm. With enthusiasm. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. and power revealing how he made the way to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about he is built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea Above the angels singing And the old redemption story And some sweet day I'll sing up there The song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. I love me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing Amen. And you may be seated, and we'll be singing Shout to the North, verses 1, 2, and 3 next. And our faith rise up and sing. Of the great and glorious King, you are strong when you feel weak, in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. Rise up, women. Of the truth, stand and sing to broken hearts who can know the healing power of our awesome King of Love. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven. and wings fill this place with songs again 
of our God who reigns on high. By his grace again we'll fly. Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. And all verses of We Will Glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am. For Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. We have several folks this morning on our uh, prayer list, and I uh, want to share those uh, with you. To the right page here. We want to uh, remember uh, Judy Lori. Judy was made a trip, quick trip to the hospital again last week. She was dehydrated, so she's back home, and we're, we're glad she's doing better there. I want to remember Marcella Bond. Marcella Bond is home now, and she's under hospice care, so we want to remember her and, of course, her husband Earl and Dana and Marilyn and all the family uh, as they're dealing with this very difficult time in their lives. Um, James Miley goes back for some more surgery tomorrow, and we want to remember James as he's dealing with the situation with kidney stones, that's an ongoing thing there, but uh, we're praying for a, a, a quick recovery for him and have him back with us again. I want to remember Richard Pangle. Richard's going to be going uh, to Genesis on Tuesday uh, for surgery. They're going to be fusing um, uh, some uh, discs in his neck, and so we want to remember him as he does that. Robin has surgery scheduled for Tuesday also in Columbus. We want to remember her. Um, so a uh, lot of uh, special needs this morning. And uh, any others that you might have? Okay. Well, very good. Well, we will join together in our prayer song. Um, and it's more love to thee. We're going to be singing all verses. And I ask you to stand with us on the last verse.
bow together in prayer. Our most precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the, the, the privilege of worshiping a God who loves and cares about us, a God who hears all of our prayers, all of our concerns, a God who knows the joys and the difficulties that we experience in this life. And we thank you most of all, Heavenly Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice that each one of us might be forgiven of our sins and have the promise of eternal life. And so, Lord, as we gather in this place this morning, we gather knowing that your word tells us that where two or three are gathered, you're there with them. And so we know that you're here with us. And so, Lord, it's right that we sing your praises that we recognize what a great and glorious God you truly are. And so, Lord, as we come here this morning, we lift these ones up who have been mentioned on our prayer list this morning. We ask you to continue to be with Judy Lori and her family. We pray for Marcella Bond as, uh, as she's facing these very difficult times. We pray that you would strengthen her and help her to just feel your presence right there in that bed with her so that she knows that you're there with your loving arms wrapped around her. We pray for her family that they might have the strength and the courage that they need to get through this difficult time in their lives. We pray for James as he faces another surgery, that you would be with him, that you would be with his doctors. Give them the wisdom that they need, the skill they need to take care of this and to help James know that you are right there in that room with him. We pray for um, Richard Pangle as he's having surgery, Lord. We just thank you for his faithfulness to this community of believers. And, Lord, we just pray that you would heal him and strengthen him, that he might be able to continue to, to just be such a, a, a vital presence in the spiritual life of this church. We pray for Robin as she is going to have her surgery on Tuesday as well. We pray, Lord, that you would just touch her and that you would just guide the hands of the doctors and those who would care for her as they perform this, uh, this surgical procedure. We pray that her recovery would be swift, Lord, and that she would be able to be again here with us soon, but also able to, to provide the music that we, we love to hear so much. So we just pray that you would be with her. We pray for uh, any others, Heavenly Father, that uh, maybe have not been mentioned. Maybe there are unspoken requests that folks have on their hearts this morning. Maybe there are people in this building who are dealing with financial issues or, or, or family issues or marital issues. Whatever the case might be, Lord, we just lift all of those things up to you because you know what the very needs of our hearts are before we even ask. And we trust you, Heavenly Father, to answer all of these prayer requests according to your will. Lord, we pray as we come together that you would just be with our country. It's a time of difficulty and turmoil. We just lift up this country, Lord. We pray that there might be a spirit of revival break out in this country like we have not seen before, that people would find a loving Savior, Jesus Christ, and that they would turn their hearts back towards you. We pray for our missionaries as they serve overseas, Heavenly Father, oftentimes in difficult and dangerous places. We pray that you would just be with them, Lord, and that you would strengthen them and keep them safe. We pray for the men and women in our armed forces, wherever they may be serving today, Lord, that you would just keep them safe. We pray for their families who miss their loved ones, Lord. We pray for peace and comfort for them. We also pray for our first responders, Lord, who take such good care of us. We just lift them up and ask that you would give them strength. Very soon, our students are going to be heading back to school, and we lift these young people up to you, Lord. We pray that you would just be there in those schoolrooms, keep them safe. We pray for our teachers, that they would have the wisdom they need to guide these young minds. And so, Lord, as we gather here, we pray for our congregation that you would just help us to continually strive to find ways to share the love of Jesus Christ with this community around the world, wherever we may go. 
And Lord, I pray last that you would just be with us through the remainder of this service, that everything that we say here and do this morning would be pleasing to you, would be for your glory, and for the uplifting of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Our communion hymn this morning is Just As I Am. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 4, and we'd ask our men to come forward on the fourth verse. This morning, in case we have any visitors with us, uh, when we pass the communion around, we ask that you partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine at that time and then pass the tray on. This morning, I will be reading from Ezra chapter 8. Now, Ezra is a small book in the Bible, 10 chapters. Uh, you don't hear uh, Ezra preach very much, but Ezra is a very interesting uh, person. Um, to give you a little background information for this passage I'm going to read, uh, you remember the uh, Babylonians uh, captured uh, the uh, people of Judah, sent them to Babylon. Uh, this was when Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken to uh, Babylon. And um, the Babylonians were later defeated by the uh, Persian Empire, the Medes and Persians. And under King Cyrus, uh, Zerubbabel was sent back to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Now, Ezra uh, plays a part in this. Uh, some 60 to 70 years after uh, Zerubbabel went to uh, Jerusalem with the first group of exiles. Uh, I read where it was probably uh, 50 some thousand people who had stayed loyal to God after the 70 years of captivity. Uh, but Ezra was sent by King Artaxerxes of Persia to go back to instruct uh, the people how to properly worship. 
Ezra was a scribe, which meant he copied all of uh, the uh, books of the Bible by hand. He was a priest, and most importantly, probably, he was a great leader. Um, also, to give you a little bit of information, um, about 13 years after um, Ezra went to Jerusalem, uh, God laid it on Nehemiah's heart to go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, this was done in a miraculous time of, I believe, 60-some days that the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt. So uh, ne Nehemiah was in charge, but Ezra served under him. And between the two of them, they led a great spiritual uh, movement uh, for the people uh, at that time. So here are the passages starting at uh, verse uh, chapter 8, verse 15. Uh, I assembled the exiles at the Havana ca Canal and camped there for three days while I went over the list of people and priests who had arrived. I found that not one Levite had volunteered to come along. Since the gracious hand of our God was on us, they sent us a man named Sherebiah, along with 18 of his sons and brothers. He was a very astute man and a descendant of Mali, who was a descendant of Levi, son of Israel. They also sent Hashabiah together with Jeshiah for, from the descendants of Mirari and 20 of his sons and brothers and 220 temple servants. The temple servants were assistants to the Levites, a group of temple workers first instituted by King David. They were all listed by name. And there by the Havana Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before God. We prayed that, we would give, he, that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children, and our goods as we traveled. For I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king, our God protects all those who worship him, but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. I appointed 12 leaders of the priest, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and 10 other priests to be in charge of transporting the silver, the gold, the gold bowls, and the other items that the king, his council, his leaders, and the people of Israel had presented to the temple of God. I weighed the treasure and I gave it to them and found the totals to be as follows. 24 tons of silver, 7,500 pounds of silver utensils, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 gold bowls and an equal, equal in value to 1,000 gold coins fine articles of polished bronze as precious as gold. So the first thing in chapter 15, when I read that, or I'm sorry, verse 15, when it talked about no Levite had uh, volunteered to go, you remember that the, the Levites were the priests uh, of the uh, Israelites. Not one of the priests had um, volunteered to go. So that held up Ezra and the group of 2,000 people until they could get uh, the priest to uh, agree to go. So as an example to us today, don't wait to be recruited uh, by someone of the church. Look around, see what you can do, volunteer uh, when you see things that can be, need to be done. Um, one thing, too, to give you an idea of the scale of this uh, trip, it was 900 miles, which had to be made on foot. Uh, it was a very dangerous and difficult journey. It took the people four months to make that trip. And I uh, did a little bit of quick calculations. That's about seven and a half miles a day over very difficult terrain on foot. Notice, too, 
as the passage was read, uh, before making physical preparations for the journey, Ezra made physical or spiritual preparations. They prayed and fasted to show their dependence upon God. Uh, they needed his protection uh, because they knew that they could not make that trip all by themselves. And talking about the uh, treasure, uh, can you imagine uh, making that long of a trip with 24 tons of silver and plus the other uh, items. Uh, this would have been an extremely uh, valuable uh, cargo and uh, the fact that uh, Ezra depended upon God to give them safe passage uh, would uh, definitely, uh, you know, gave us an insight into how much he uh, turned to God for for guidance. So some people may ask, well, why does this passage from Ezra have anything to do with around the communion table? Ezra was a very devout man. Uh, we need to be uh, equally as devout as we come around the table this morning, uh, knowing that we too need to depend upon God for everything that we do. With these thoughts in mind, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have this morning uh, to be in your house. We ask that you would help us truly uh, look upon uh, your plan of salvation for us, knowing that man sinned and separated himself from you, but you had a plan through Christ to redeem all of us who accept you as their personal Savior. We know that uh, Ezra looked upon the scripture to guide him, and we ask that we look at the scripture to guide us during these difficult times in history, and we ask that you would help us to remember that we have the responsibility to tell others about Christ. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
I'll be reading from Matthew 13, starting verse 1 through 9. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while the people stood on the shore. Then he told many of them things and parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. He was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along a rocky place where it did not have much soil. It sprang up and quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no roots. Others fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Many of us have heard the parable of the sower several times. And I understand, as Jesus explains it later in chapter 13, how the different scenarios are representative to how we receive the message of salvation. The part of the parable that I want to focus on this morning is the last two scenarios, the seed that fell among the thorns and the seed that fell in the good soil. These two parables are explained starting in verse 22. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word but worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes it, making it unfruitful. But the one who receives the seed that fell on the good soil is a man who hears a word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what is sown. So I task you that we all want to be like the seed that fell, un, fell into the good soil, just like a farmer who cares for their crops by spending his time, energy, and money to ensure they yield a large harvest. We too should invest in our spiritual future and not let the thorns of life choke us out. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come to this part in our service, apart and separate from communion, we, we deem it a ideal time to take up an offering, an offering that is used to further and spread your word. May we invest in, in this church and in our own spiritual growth by giving to you, Lord. May you bless the gift and the giver. One day save us in heaven, in Jesus' name. Let's stand together for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. 
Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Just doesn't seem right if that's not there. <clears throat> We have a young lady in our congregation. Uh, she is homeschooled, which is kind of a unique thing. But in the years of teaching college, I have to tell you, the best thing I ever had was a homeschooled girl. She was just amazing. And this young lady we have, uh, being homeschooled, one part of her curriculum is she memorizes Bible verses. And she's going to share with you now. Emmy, come on up. I rejoin the Lord greatly that now wait, at wait, last. Wait, 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 wait. to the end of it. But I rejoin in the Lord greatly that now at last they care for me as first again. So you surely did. We gone and to be content. I know how to be a base. I know how to abound ever. and to be hungry but to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Darla. Who's going to do that next week? Young people, you may go. Junior church, you may go. Now, before we get started, I have to tell you, last week my feelings were hurt, just, just terribly, terribly hurt. We had this wonderful, wonderful picnic at Caldwell Lake. It rained a little, did not hurt anything. Kids had a great time. They played and they ran. There was cornhole. Stay away from Sean Miller when it comes to cornhole. He's got his own things. He's going, no, stay away from Sean. It was a wonderful time, and there was all this food, all this food. It was just, it was great, it was great, it was great. But after two years of knowing me, there was one, one pecan pie. There were no cream pies. There were no fruit pies. There was one pecan pie. That's all. I really thought it meant more to you than that. Just, just have to say what? Somebody ate him before I saw him. I didn't see that. I saw brownies from Danny. Well, they didn't save a piece for me. Anyway, it was a great picnic. And thanks to everybody that came and participated. We had some folks that, that just couldn't be there. But we filled that shelter up. It really, really was a great time. And uh, I'm so glad we did it. Looking forward to next year. And uh, just, just thanks for everybody that, that had part in that. Just, it, was, it was really, really good. Now for this morning, uh, we're going to talk about weight. Acts 1, verses 1 through 5. So, so uh, go ahead, Paul. Now, I have to tell you, patience is a virtue. It's not mine. This morning, service started. We started at 10.01. Not 10, 1001, but not, not that I'm counting. And that guy up here, the guy with the suit jacket, he went on and on saying, welcome, 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 welcome. Then we sang one, two, three praise songs. Two years ago during COVID, we were singing one. Now, one, two, three. Then, then we had four verses to the prayer song. This stuff goes on forever and forever and forever. And we didn't used to have any meditations. And now we have this communion meditation about Ezra. It's great. It's wonderful. It's a great meaning. But, and then, then Scott gets up and he does a, a great 
offering meditation about the parable of the sowers. I'm going, yeah, that's, that's great, but it's my turn. It's my turn. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Patience is a virtue, but it's not mine. Chances are it's not yours either. And everything that's happened in the service today has been just exactly how we planned it, how we wanted it to go, and everybody did their part in it exactly as they should have. It could not have been better unless you take your eyes off of what you're doing and look to something that has to do with you or something that has to do with me. Sermons, lots of times, are about other things, but sometimes it's about me because I, in a hurry, I want to go. So, let's talk about waiting today. Okay, for several weeks, we've been planning our fall program. We've got things like our, our Sunday school. You're going to start hearing a lot about that. We've got this thing planned where Jake and I are both going to use a, a video to start our vacation Bible or our Sunday school with. And I'll do the adult one and he'll do the kids one. And they'll be correlated. That, that's exciting stuff for, for us preacher types. And we've got a fall festival coming. We've got trunk or treat. And we've got men's breakfast and ladies meetings and our Bible studies and our youth groups. And all this stuff's going on. And it's still summer. <laughs> have to wait for fall. Why, why can't we start last week? Because it's not time yet. <gasps> patience, patience, patience. Okay, Acts chapter 1, verse 1. In my former book, the book Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. What did the apostles do for those 10 days they waited for the Holy Spirit to arrive? Just go back and remember, Jesus was crucified. He was in the grave for three days. He rose. For 40 days, he was there. They saw him. They ate with him. 500 people saw him at one time. For 40 days, they, he was with them. On the 40th day, they went to the mountaintop. He said, go ye therefore into the altations, teaching them, baptizing them, gave them the great commission, and poof, he takes off, disappears. Ten days later. Ten days later. Ten days later. They were in one place, and the Holy Spirit came. It was like a ball of fire. It sounded like a freight train, and the church began. What did they do for those 10 days? Scripture doesn't say. But I imagine they were saying, what now? Let's go. Let's do something. What, what should we do? And there was nothing to do for 10 days. That was God's way of saying, wait just a minute. This sermon process is, is kind of complicated. Um, but this idea of them waiting for those 10 days brought to my mind, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Faint. Those who wait upon the Lord. Well, that passage, if we look at the full thing, and the NIV says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
King James says, those who wait in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. At the very beginning of that passage, Isaiah says, have you not heard? Of course they, were, they heard about God. Of course they understood he was God. He created everything. They had heard, but they forgot. Sometimes we forget too. Okay. Um, in our daily struggle with life, all the things we do, we forget who's really in charge. We forget who's program it is. We think it's our program. It's not. It's his program and we have to work with it. Isaiah reminds us of the benefits of putting our hope in God. Of taking what belongs to us and giving it to him and letting him do it. You all remember Carrie Underwood's song, Jesus Take the Wheel. She's driving down the road. It's icy and the car starts to spin and then she says, Jesus, take the wheel because I'm out of control. Well, we need to do that sooner rather than later and we need to wait for him. That the Lord is the everlasting God from the creator to the end puts our role in the universe into perspective. Job said, who is a man that you would even take note of him? Our, we are not the center of the universe. There is nothing that he, being God, has not seen, heard, or experienced that we are going through now. I don't care what's happening in life. I don't care how terrible life is at the moment. Someone else has been through it, and God has been through it with them. And sometimes we have to step back and say, God, I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why it's like this. I don't understand, but I know you've been here before. Hold my hand and let's go. He is the creator. He started it all. It all works according to his plan. He is not subject to human frailties. He does not grow tired. He does not second guess himself. He does not wonder about this and that. He is God. He is the creator. His understanding of everything is beyond our comprehension. We don't understand it, but trust me, he does. He shares with us his strength. He shares with us his strength. We don't have to be that strong because he is. Even the young grow tired and weary, but not God. Yeah, no, we were out of the Grand Canyon, and uh, there's about one person that dies every day in the Grand Canyon. Most of them are guys between 18 and 24 because they're young, they're athletic, they're strong, and they run from the top of the Grand Canyon all the way to the bottom. It's only 10 miles. They get to the bottom, and they take a sip of water, and they run back up. About a third of the way up, the exhaustion, the heat exhaustion gets them. And they kill over, and they die. Even though they're young, even though they're in shape, they're not equipped for that. But God is. Those who hope, those who wait, will have their strength renewed. We're not necessarily talking about physical strength. We're talking about the strength of our mind and our soul, our spirit, to continue on. You can get tired, but when your, your mind and your soul gets weary and tired, you don't know if you can go on. It's not because you can't get up, but you don't know if you want to get up. But God is strong enough to do that for us. When we talk about strength, it can have several meanings. It can be physical. It can be mental. And strength can be by faith. All of these count. When we are down, when we are down, we need help in all three. We need physical strength. We need mental strength. And our faith needs a boost. To soar on wings like eagles has three pictures for us to consider. Uh, and we're behind it, though, so I really am hurrying. So, three things to consider. One, eagles with a great wingspan can soar to great heights. You can't get there without a plane. They can soar to great heights. And when it says they soar on wings like eagles, the picture is that magnificent bird soaring higher than we could ever imagine. That's one picture for this passage. Number two. 
eagles in, typo there, in their old age molt. Yes, that's spelled correctly. That's how it was in the commentary. They molt. They lose all their feathers. They grow new ones. Then they are able to fly high again. They are renewed. The old goes away and the new grows in. They are renewed. That's the picture of eagles soaring on wings because they've been renewed with feathers. But here's the picture I like. There's a story, and I can't verify it. I've heard it in sermon after sermon. But eagles, when they are teaching their young to fly, they will carry their, their offspring, their, their eaglet. Uh, they will put them on their back, and they will soar up to a great height because they can do that. And they get up there a mile or two, and they dump them. And this poor little baby bird falls. And one of two things will happen. On that way down, the eagle says, oh, wait a minute, I can do this. And it flies, and soon it will soar. But for those of those who ride the short bus, these eaglets, and they're, they're going down, 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 and they don't get it, you know what happens? The adult eagle comes in, swoops in under them, catches them on their back. And they do it time after time after time. Fly. In our lives, we go through turmoil and we go through troubles and lots of things. And we feel like we're that baby going, we're just flying. This is the end. I'm going to crash. I'm going to die. And just before impact, whoosh, there comes God. He catches us. And lifts us up high. Those who wait on the Lord, that needs to be us. To straw on wings like eagles, that's us. The picture Isaiah paints is of us being able to continue. To continue to live life. Even when we are tired, we're beaten down, and ready to quit. Because we wait on him. So... What did those apostles do for 10 days? These are things I think they did. One, they remembered Jesus' words. Three and a half years they were taught by him. They sat around and they recalled what he said. We call that Bible study. Number two, they prayed. Direct line to God. We still have that. And number three, they sat their, t their minds on the task ahead. They knew something was going to happen. They knew the comfort was coming. What happened then, they didn't know. But they sat there and they said, we're ready. Let it happen. Let's go. In my mind, that's us. That's still summer, but not for long. Jesus might come back. We might start our fall. But whatever it is, whatever we're going through, he's there and we're ready to soar on wings like eagles, because we've got a great wingspan, because our, fan, our feathers have been renewed, or because he's got us, he's lifting us up, that we can learn to fly on our own. As we look ahead, you may be feeling tired, weary, worn out, and doubtful of your strength. Take Isaiah to heart. Those who wait in the Lord will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. The key, the key is to know the one that gives you the strength. You have to have the power of God uh, behind you. The key is to trust in him. Are you a believer? Have you been baptized? Do you live for him daily? Are you a believer but you've never been baptized? You need to come forward and do that today. Do you need to rededicate your life? Transfer your membership. The invitation is from him to you. And the only thing stopping you from doing that is you. We stand as we sing.
I've been waiting for fall, and I'm so excited about the stuff that's going to go on. I just think God's going to do some really, really great things, and you need to be a part of it. To be a part of it, you need to be here. So, I know, don't get distracted. Focus, because he can take the church and use, more specifically, the great heights to soar on wings like eagles. I'm jealous of eagles. I, I'm jealous. I am. So, um, keep in mind, James has Kenny stuff tomorrow. Robin gets a thing in her brain. Um, she has an aneurysm. So, so they're going to put like a, a stent in there. So, so that, and uh, Richard's getting vertebrae fused. Oh, it's going to be a big day. I'm tired already. So, but oh, come on. Come on. Who, who has benediction? You know, who has benediction? All right, Sean, would you have a benediction, please? Father, we thank you. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to be here with people of like faith. We thank you for Preacher Brent and the powerful message of strength and patience he put into words that we could all understand and identify with. Father, I ask that you bless all of us with strength as we leave here. Please let us be able to link this Sunday with next Sunday over the next six days by filling our minds with your word and giving us the strength to fill the ears of others with that word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Victory in Jesus with enthusiasm. <laughs>